Assalam o Alaikum. Welcome to my channel. This is Hiswana. Today we are going to learn some important literary terms, which are used by writers in their compositions to make them more effective and attractive. If you are new to my channel, subscribe it, press the bell icon, and click all options so that the notification of my all new videos may reach to you. What are literary terms? or figures of speech or literary devices these are the techniques or devices that are used by the writers to enhance the effectiveness to embellish to persuade the reader to create a special impact to skillfully articulate their literary pieces of writings the first figure of speech that we are going to discuss is alliteration Alliteration is a literary device in which consonants are repeated in two or more neighboring words or syllables particularly at the beginning of the words or stressed syllables It is very old device in English verse and occasionally used in prose It is used to achieve the special effect and emphasis in verse and prose For example in William Shakespeare's play as you like it the repeating sounds of ch v v b is a beautiful use of alliteration in hamlet there is an example delight and dole here is the repetition of bass consonant sound that has created a special effect assonance assonance consists of similar vowel sounds in the nearby words to enhance the meaning of the words or to set the mood in edgar allan poe's the bell here the mellow wedding bells here are the repetition of e vowel sound in three consecutive words allusion a figure of speech that is an implicit reference perhaps to another work of literature or art to a person or an event the reference of helen is used by many writers in literature as a symbol of beauty that is allusion to helen of troy in hamlet Shakespeare has used this technique very beautifully. Seneca cannot be too heavy, not Plautus too light. This is an allusion to two Roman playwrights, Seneca and Plautus. Simile is a figure of speech in which one thing is likened to another by the use of words as or like. The common examples are as white as snow as brave as lion in literature here is an example from Ted Hughes poem February the wolf with its belly stretched full of big pebbles nebulum wolves barked like black pine forest here the wolves are compared with black pine forest by the use of the word like metaphor is a figure of speech in which one thing is described in terms of another it is a comparison that is little bit implicit as compared to simile where the two things are compared explicitly in lord of the flies by william golding The sun is compared with a drop of burning gold. This has created a special effect in his writing. Personification is an attribution of human qualities, feelings or emotions to inanimate objects. Sylvia Plath in her poem The Moon and the Yew Tree 
has used this technique very impressively. She has given the qualities of human beings or feelings to the moon that cannot think, that cannot be upset, that cannot drag the sea, that cannot be quiet, that cannot be despaired or that cannot be sober. So she has used this technique in these verses very very beautifully. Antithesis Placing contradictory ideas to put them in balance, sharpened by the use of opposite or noticeably different meanings. It is common in rhetoric and was particularly favored by the Augustan poets and users of heroic couplets. John Dryden in Absalom and Achitophel has used this technique very very effectively. Raised in extremes and an end in extremes decried, with oaths affirmed with dying woes denied. Not weighed or winnowed by the multitude, but swallowed in the mass, unchewed and crude. Some truth there was, but dashed and brewed with lies, to please the foes and puzzle all the wise. Succeeding times did equal folly call, believing nothing or believing all. In these verses, Dryden has used this technique to create a balance by putting the contradictory ideas side by side. Shakespeare has also used this technique very beautifully. With an auspicious and a dropping eye, with mirth in funeral and with virgin marriage, to be or not to be, that is the question. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen. Oxymoron, a figure of speech which combines in Congress and apparently contradictory words and meanings for a special effect. It is common device closely related to antithesis and paradox, especially in poetry. In Romeo and Juliet, Shakespeare has used this technique very impressively. For example, hate and love, dwelling love, loving hate, heavy lightness, serious vanity, light bright smoke, coal fire, sick health, still waking sleep that is not what it is so these are the examples of oxymoron paradox is an apparently self-contradictory statement which is found to contain a truth on closer inspection for example less is more in literature congreve has used this technique in Amaret, careless she is with artful care, affecting to seem unaffected. Paradox is a figure of speech in which a statement appears to contradict itself. A paradox is a statement or group of statements, sentences that contradict what we know while delivering an inherent truth. An oxymoron is a combination of two words that contradict each other. It is a dramatic figure of speech. On the other hand, oxymorons are often referred to as a contradiction in terms. They are just that, a word or two that bounce off each other. Paradoxes, however, are and dire phrases, sentences or quotes. Actually, both achieve the same result. Hopefully, you have learned some important literary terms used by the writers. Like my video, share with others and see you next time. 
थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग